got to do some random functions. And by that, I mean random functions, not random functions. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to generate some random numbers. There's two functions for this. I've briefly covered, covered both of them before. However, um, I'm going to show how you might actually use them. Now, my favourite one, which is quite a recent one, it's less than 20 years old, is rand between. And it's a nice long function. So if ever you're typing a long function like rand between and you don't want to go to the effort of typing the whole word, you can just um, use the up and down arrows and then select from the shortcuts menu the function name that you want and press the tab key. So that's just about easier than typing 10 characters, but only just. Um, Round between is a really easy function. What it does is it allows you to generate a random number between two numbers. So you choose the bottom number. In this case, I'm going to say one. And then you put a comma in, you choose the top number, and I'm going to say 99. And then when I close it, you can hit return. I'll get a random number between one and 99. Not very exciting, but very functional. If I scroll down, I get more random numbers. Um, whenever you change something in Excel, if you've got a RAND function, the, the, uh, the RAND function updates. So, for example, that says 99 now. If I delete all this lot, it will say something else. And if I type something in here, it will say something else. I mean, it's completely random, so there's no guarantee what it will say. Um, so, as I said before, it, it doesn't seem uh, super obvious uh, what you'd use that for. But I'll come back to that in a minute. So that's one RAND function. The other RAND function is really easy. It's just called RAND. And um, there's a few functions like this where they are really easy because um, you can't put anything in the brackets. It's daft, but this is how RAND works. And if I hit return, it will give me a completely random number between 0 and 1. You think like, well, that's really useless. <laughs> but it's not really useless. If you want to round a number between 1 and 10, then just multiply it by 10, because between 0 and 1 will give you a random number between 1 and 10. This used to be the only way of getting a random number. And when they introduced it in 2003, it was quite a clever function. So it can be a random number between 1 and 100. Now, this leads nicely on to rounding, because if you wanted to get a whole number, then you could use the int function. And the int function is another one of those functions that's really nice because all it does is it turns a number into an integer. In other words, it means that it cuts off anything after the decimal point. So if you put 1.99 and you turn 199 into an integer, that becomes 1. It doesn't become 2. The integer cuts off what's after the decimal point. If you want to round stuff, you need a rounding function. But I'm just going to show you int and then I'll talk about rounding in a minute because that's much more um, useful and rand isn't necessarily that useful. Anyway, if I say int now, open brackets, put that stuff in between it, close the brackets, hit return, that's a whole number between 1 and 100 because it's an integer, in other words, a whole number. It's a completely random number between 0 and 1 and it's multiplied by 100. So this, you might be looking at this thinking, yeah, I'm never going to use that. And that's why I'm going for it quickly. Because if you do use it, then great. But if you don't, then um, I don't want to waste um, any time. So um, you're probably thinking, why on earth would I ever want to generate a random number in Excel? Um, well, I'll give you an example of a couple of things that you might decide to use it for, or you might find you can actually save time with. One of the easy ones is generating a password. So if you've got a, a, a list of people's names, in, I don't know, column C or A or somewhere, um, and you've got 50 people that you're um, needing to give passwords to, um, maybe uh, for people that are the head of HR or somebody who's implementing a new bit of software or somebody who's put a new um, gate system in. Um, if you need to generate random passwords, it's a bit of a faff if you've got to do more than 10 people because you've got to really think about it. Whereas you can really easily create a random password generator using the RAND function. So, for example, if I wanted to do a three-digit number, um, I could easily say equals, or to do a four-digit number, be really daring, uh, round between 100 and 900, no, 1,000, and um, 999. 
9,999. I only had one coffee this morning. Um, so there's a random four digit number. And if I was generating pins for a bunch of people to type in to get into uh, uh, some secure system, that would save me having to think of numbers. Passwords are a bit more useful, I suppose. Um, and if ever you do generate a list of random numbers you're going to give out to people, then it's important to copy that and then paste it to value afterwards. Because otherwise, every time you type something, it'll keep changing. And then you give people a password, you don't know what the password was. Um, another function that's really useful in conjunction with this, if you wanted to generate passwords, is the um, character function. It works like this, equals car, open brackets, and you put a number in there. And every character is a number. Um, the lowercase characters start at 97, I think, and the uppercase start at 65. So if I say character 65, that should be an uppercase A. Yeah. If I say character 90, then that should be Z. If I say character uh, 97, that should be a lowercase A. So working on that principle, if I wanted to generate a password, I could say car and then say equal, no, not equals, uh, rand between open brackets. And if I wanted to be a lowercase letter, I could say 65, comma, uh, 90, close bracket, hit return. So not lowercase, uppercase. So that generates an uppercase letter. So if it was like 10 letters, I could just copy that bit of code. That'd be a really lazy way of doing it. And I can just say that and that and that, etc. etc. Let's do one more than that. And there's some random words. So that was really good that I didn't get any swear words there. Anyway, um, so that's the general gist of it. If you want me to explain that slower, just ask. Um, but I'm guessing that everyone's had just enough of that one already, so I won't go any further. But um, <laughs> that is, uh, so that's the between function, the character function, and um, and the character set, oh, yeah. and the um, little and sign to uh, join things together. You can do it using a function called concatenate, which makes it look really clever. But it's just a lot more typing. Um, so um, I'm going to show you one last thing on this random lark, um, and that is how we might use it to pull out a random invoice. For example, if I was checking people's expenses randomly, or if I was checking, um, um, I don't know, um, invoices or um, doing an audit or something like that, or checking timesheets. So what I do is I pull up one we used previously, that's stuff for Wednesday. That's got a lot of invoices in it on the bit that's called invoices. So here we have a list of invoices. <laughs> That'll be familiar to um, to anybody that was on the course on Wednesday. So what I'm going to do is on another sheet, I am going to um, just pull up a random invoice. What's on sheet 10? Oh, it's that one. Right, sheet 11, then I'm going to do this. And to save me having to um, type those titles in, I'm just going to copy that. Let's copy that heading. So in there, zoom in a bit. And I want a random invoice number here. And so the random invoice number will be between one and, well, 1001 and 1017. Yeah. Okay, so equals rand between 1001 and 1017. So I've got myself a random invoice number now, um, but what I want to do is I want to pull up um, all the other details. So this is where a good old VLOOKUP comes in. So much as I think it's an incredibly dated function, um, it's so useful for doing stuff like this. So I'd say look up um, whatever's in A2. But I want that locked on column A because I'm going to drag this across. So I need to put a dollar in front of the A to do an absolute reference. And if it doesn't make any sense, just ask and I'll explain absolute referencing. There you go. Um, so um, that'll give me um, whatever's in that column. 
the table array is in invoices. So I'm going to say invoices, exclamation mark, um, and it will be um, A to H. That's easy because I've got um, uh, same columns in this sheet. I'm going to press F4 to put the dollars in for me on this one. And a comma. Now here I need a column index number. This will be the column in the data set. So it'd be column one for this one, column two for this one, column three for this one. But to save me having to um, change it for each one or do some weird calculation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a column function. And if I just type in column and then open brackets and give it this cell reference, so B2, close brackets, that will tell me what column I'm in. And because it's the same number of columns in the other sheets, it means that I haven't got to tell it to do column one, column two, column three. It'll be it will work all that out for itself. Then comma and false because I want it to work. So when I close the brackets and hit return, that should give me a date, but it'll give it to me as a number, so it'll look weird. But don't worry about that. I'll also fill that across. Everything else should look fine. And that just needs to be turned into a date. Like so. So if I look at invoice number 1006, it should be for the 25th of November and be 536. 1006, 25th of November, 536 quid. Yeah, good. So if I just wanted to pull up um, three random invoices to double check all their details, there's three random invoices. So random, I've got one of them twice. Yeah, that's an amazing example. That's better. Four completely random invoices. Anyway, so that's, a, that's random for you, and um, I've probably done enough random now to last the whole month. So, um, what should I do next? Yeah, going to move on to uh, rounding. Can I, just, can I just ask a question? If, if you don't lock the cell, what happens? What, what does it do? Pick up other data from other places or? And what with, you don't the, use with the dollar? Yeah, yeah. Let me show you one here. So this one, let's get rid of yeah. one. If I double click on that cell there, you can see the blue bit is the invoice number. Now if I take that yeah. dollar away and hit return, yeah, yeah it works fine. But if I drag it over, right. where it's currently saying five, that A5 will turn into B5, and then it will turn into C5, D5, etc., etc. But I want to look at the invoice number. So now it's looking at the date, and then it's looking at yeah. the analysis code, and then oh, so it's moving right. it across. Okay. So the, the, yeah. uh, the dollar just locks it in place. It absolutely references yeah. it, it, kind of just holds it there. Yeah, yeah. So if ever you're in a situation where you've got um, a, uh, an exchange rate or a VAT rate or a delivery charge or any sort of one single cell that's a fixed point, and you've got loads of calculations that need to look at that, but you don't want to have yeah. to keep retyping it. You just use yeah. the dollars and then you lock on and right. drag it down. Simple yeah. as that. Oh, okay. Right. I reckon yeah, that one's pretty much done to death now. So I'm going to do. Um, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to do uh, int and rounding. That's quite important. Um, yeah, rounding. We'll do rounding next. I'm sure I just thought of something really clever to cover and then I've completely forgotten it, but that doesn't matter. Um, so, everyone happy with all that? Any questions? I oh, know, I was forgetting. I'm supposed to do this. I noticed yesterday watching the news. Whenever you get big and clever people doing interviews these days, they've all got bookcases behind them. See, I've been using a Kindle for about 10 years, so I don't have any bookcases. <laughs> so it's all right for these smart people who like their books, but anyway, never mind. <laughs> Jane's just got a whole load of files. <laughs> just loads and loads of invoices. But um, anyway, moving on. So, um, rounding. Let's put some values in that need rounding. Um, if I were to uh, type in, I don't know, one pound ninety-nine, one pound fifty, um, 
on pound 49 and 60. These are all classic examples of numbers. Um, <laughs> when you're working with um, a lot of figures and you're doing calculations across and as well as down, things like if you're doing VAT, um, you can end up with rounding errors where the bottom of your spreadsheet is looking at um, the, the VAT calculation and it comes out as one thing and when it goes across it comes as something else and adding that lot up comes up to a slightly different figure. And it might only be pence or it might be on like hundreds of invoices, it might end up being a couple of pounds, but you end up with calculations that aren't making sense, especially if you've got a calculation where it's doing a percentage and there's like 30 decimal places, but you only see two of them or you don't see any. So to make these calculations work better, there's a whole bunch of rounding tools. And I don't mean formatting, because if I select that lot and I say, well, let's format that as a number, it becomes two digits. That's not changed the number at all. Behind the scenes, if it's got six decimal places, it will still have six decimal places. So if I say, let's do that one, 1.499999. And so, um, see, ah, see now it's come up as 1.5, but the calculation will be based on the number that's behind the scenes. And so we could end up with something that, um, that we're not expecting. So to fix these things, we can use um, functions to give us the real number. Uh, if you literally want to cut off what appears after a decimal place, which no one wants to do except for programmers, because that's a programmer thing, um, you can use the int function. If I use int and take a look at that, the reason you'd never do it is because int looking at 199 would become one. And that would be no good in accounts at all because that's just too severe. Um, so instead, you've got three rounding functions to work with, and uh, they are shockingly straightforward. The first one is, ready for this? Round, no, round. And all you do is you choose the character, character, cell reference, number, whatever, and you decide how many places you want to round it to. So in this instance, it's already a two digit number, but if I say, well, I'll round it to um, zero digits, and so I just get a whole number. This is much more um, usable than um, the int function because here, I'll drag that down, we've got the kind of rounding that you'd expect. One pound 50 is two pounds, one pound 49 is one pound, yeah, 160 is two pound, that kind of thing. So round um, just gives you a whole, you know, a whole round number. But we could say that I want to round it to two decimal places if it was like six um, digits to it, or if it's a percentage calculation, and you wanted to make sure that percentage resulted in you know two decimal places. So that's one of the rounding functions. Um, another one, and, and these are really easy, is um, round up. Open brackets works in exactly the same way. You choose a number. You choose a number of decimal places. In this case, again, I'm going to say no decimal places. And you were shocked to hear this, it rounds a number up. This is the one that you do when you're working on your expenses. Round it. <clears throat> and it is actually what you're supposed to do on a on a um, self-assessment, round up your expenses. Pretty reasonable. There's not an option in there to round it up to the nearest grand, unfortunately, but um, but that's round up. And there's one more round function. Now, this one will surprise you. It's called rounds down. Now, I'm going to let you guess what it does, um, but I'm going to put the um, same cells in there. And again, say no decimal places, and then close the brackets. And that one rounds down, which of course is what you do on your income. So those are the round functions. They all work in a really easy way. You've got round to give you rounded number, round up to force it to round up and round down to force it to round down. But however many decimal places you're looking for. That's just a useful thing to know about um, if you get rounding errors, basically. Whereas the next thing is useful for everybody in the world ever. Let's get rid of those numbers. Okay. So this is so important. And anyone that works in Excel needs to know everything is coming next because it's the difference between doing useful, functional, practical spreadsheets 
and doing spreadsheets that are so tedious, it's like having your fingernails pulled out um, for people that work on the maze. Uh, this is date functions or how to work with dates. When working with dates in Excel, you should type in the day, first of all, well, the number of the day, followed by an oblique, followed by the month, followed by an oblique, followed by the year. The year is completely optional. If you don't put the year in, that's fine. It will default to the system year, which should be the current year, depending how your system is set up. Now, when you hit return, it gives you a date. Hurrah! But what it does behind the scenes is it converts that date into a number and it stores it as a number. Now, you might be thinking, I don't want my dates to look like that. I want them to appear completely differently. That doesn't matter. The important thing is that you type it in, first of all, as a date. If you want that to say um, the 12th of March, that's fine um, because you can make it appear like anything as long as it's been typed in as a date. Um, afterwards, you can just change it to whatever you want. So if I put in like 25th of December, it's going to come up with whichever format it wants. And I can do that here. And I could do today's date, um, etc. Uh, so you can do different dates in however you like, as long as it goes in as a date and it knows. Once it's in as a date, then you can format it to appear however you like. And so if I select all of those, I can either go up to here and choose from the, the list of short date or long date, or I can go to more number formats, which I can also get to in a variety of other ways. But either way, we'll come up with this and then I can go to dates. In there is a whole bunch of date formats. It doesn't matter which one I choose. When I click on OK, the numbers behind the scenes will still be there. Um, but um, well, they're twice four. Um, but, um, but they'll be formatted in a different way. So this is why it's really important to put dates in as dates, because if you've got 200 numbers, and then somebody says to you afterwards, oh, actually, we now need it to have um, a four digit year, or we now need the month name to appear as text rather than a number. If they're in there as um, dates, you can just go in and change a column and bang, it's done, take seconds. If they're typed in as text, um, then it's just gonna require a whole lot of typing. See, that doesn't mean anything, that's just a bit of text. So that's one reason why it's important to put them in as uh, dates. The other one is that you can do calculations on them. So if you want to know um, how long someone's been off work on holiday, you can calculate. If you want to know how old the invoice is, you can calculate it. If you want to know how many pays until the contract renews, you can calculate it. It's really easy. And we'll come back to the calculation bit in a second. But first, let's look at the date formats again. Um, so you can get to that by either clicking on the drop down or by right mouse clicking and saying format cells or by selecting that and clicking on the fly apps, whichever one you like the look of. And then you get the date um, choices here. So like I say, there's a whole bunch of different formats, covers most people's needs. If, however, it doesn't, then you can boldly go to custom and you can jolly with them, create your own date format. Let's get rid of that one. Um, date formats are really easy. It's D or day of the month. In other words, the first will be shown as one. DD or day of the month um, in two digits. So the first of the month will show as um, zero one. Three Ds, day of the week, abbreviated. Four Ds, day of the week in full. You get the general idea. Um, so you can put whatever combination you like. Um, you've got the same thing for months. So two digits. Um, Short text, long text, same thing for years, so you can't have year in text, that'd be silly. Um, you can put obliques in there if you want to make it look snazzy, you can put hyphens in there, you can do whatever you like really. Um, but once you've created your date format, when you say okay, it'll create, well that's horrible, um, it will create a, um, a custom format like so. And um, I've just got to change that year bit because that is horrible. It's just like a four digit year. And they're still stored as dates, so the important thing is that you can still calculate on them. Oh, Christmas is on Friday. Yay. 
Um, and if I'm, not it makes any difference, um, <laughs> every day is a Friday or a Saturday at the moment. If I apply that format to this, it'll do nothing because that's just a piece of text and that's no good. So, um, calculating on dates. Let me show you how this works. Today's date, 21st of fourth. Now, if I, oh, it's April. Um, if I were to change that um, to, um, to a number, I would get this. 43,942. Now, do you all recognize that? Well, you must recognize that. Well, you know, surely you're looking at knowing exactly what that is. It's the number of days since the beginning of the last century. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. <laughs> and so, um, 1st of January, 1900 is one. 2nd of <laughs> January, 1900 is two. Uh, today is 43,942, um, and tomorrow is 43,943. And you're thinking to yourself, why is he telling us this? <laughs> what is the point? Um, the point is that if you want to calculate on dates, it's easy. They're just big numbers. And so behind the scenes, you're just saying that number plus another number or less another number. So, for example, if I want to know how many days till Christmas, I could put the 21st or the 4th. Oh, that's got the horrible format. I'm going to reformat this just to the normal short date. Um, yeah, that's better. So, if I want to know how many days till Christmas, I could say equals the big number minus the slightly smaller number. And I hit return and it comes out of gibberish. Now, if ever that happens, that's just because um, that cell's formatted as a date. And the answer isn't a date, it's a number of days. So let's put that back to being a, um, a general number. So oh, 248 days till Christmas. Who'd have thought it? Um, I wonder if lockdown would be done by then. The, um, the other thing you can do, you know, if, you want to, if you're if you looking at this and you say, oh, this contract um, renews in 90 days or the trial expires in 90 days, I'd say equals today's date plus 90. And that will give me 90 days from today. Definitely won't be done by then. Um, if I um, if I were to type in um, the dates that all of the um, airline pilots have been laid off to, um, I could say, um, what's that date minus today's date? And it gives me the answer in gibberish, but I need to format that as a number. 52 days. At least another 52 days of this. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's dates. That's just some of the basic stuff. Uh, before I go on to the other exciting stuff, does anyone have any questions about any of that? No? Okay. Hi. Not good, huh? Um, there are some really cool date functions. And by cool, I mean some of them are really easy. One of the easiest functions is today. It's, it's great because just like the RAND function, you have no control over what it does. It just does open close brackets, and then when you hit return, it tells you today's date. That's it. This is useful because if I were to open this spreadsheet tomorrow, it'll say today's date again, but that'll be tomorrow's date, except that'll be today because to, anyway, that will show 20 seconds <laughs> if I open this. <laughs> but um, I'm tightly confused. Yeah, no, that, that, that was intentional. Um, but um, but yeah, so. It's handy if you want to know um, how old an invoice is. And so if the invoice value is in big as well, let's make them both big. The invoice date that's outstanding that you're following is from the 23rd of Feb. And when it hits the magic number, you're going to send the boys around with a black and white. Um, then every day you get to spreadsheet, that 58 will increase until finally. Um, yeah, it ends in pain. No, um, until, uh, until it gets to the number you're looking for. So that's the today function. It can also be used for counting down how many days to your holiday. Um, if you want to count it in hours, you can use now, which is probably the easiest function in Excel because it's shorter than today, um, but it also includes a the time. These um, refresh with the current figures, but they don't do it automatically. They do it when you open a document or when you type something into a document. 
So if I was waiting for that to change to 39, it's not going to happen all by itself. I'd have to type something in. Um, other functions, you can use functions like um, things to work out the number of days between two dates, but based on the working week. Or you can do it based on um, or, um, the working week. <laughs> I can't think of any other thing. Um, so, um, so now, just to prove a point about that, I can type in something like hello, just by default typing something in, and that 38 will now change to 39. Um, so if I was to say how many days between, oh, let's, do, uh, let's do good old Christmas again. Everyone loves that one. So days between that and today. But if I want to know how many work days, I think it's network days, or is it work days? I'll find out in a second. Um, start date today, end date, Christmas, brace yourselves. Oh, only 179 work days till Christmas. <laughs> and so that's network days, not network days, net work days. Um, there's other things you can do. There's some quite cute functions for um, extracting parts of the date. Because another thing people will say is that, oh, yeah, but I want to sort by month. I want to group my things by month. But I can only do it by um, dates and it keeps going wrong. And if you format it as a month, that won't sort it. Well, if you've got a column of dates and you just want to see the month, then use the function for month. You just do equals month, open bracket, select the date, close bracket, hit return, and you get the month. And so that is the fourth month. I right, say, so that's the first, even there's nothing in there. That's clever. Um, you can do the same thing with the day. Oddly enough, that's called day. I think you get a general principle on this. I'm not going to go all with these. Uh, but, um, it will tell you which day, what the actual day in that date is, and the same thing with year, etc., etc. And if you're in a situation where you oh, I feel compelled to do it now. Um, if you're in a situation where, for some reason, you've got a spreadsheet which has got the day, month, and year all separated out, these will say the same year, except for that one. You can join them back together again using a function called date. And it starts with the year. Then it's the month, no, the month, then it's the day. These aren't quite such useful or commonly used functions, but um, uh, they're still date functions. So, um, yeah, that's about it for dates, I reckon. Um, any questions? <laughs> no? Not, not on dates, but on something else in a minute. Is that right? I'm just waiting yeah, that's definitely, yeah. Let me, I just need to relatively yeah. click on something and then I um, give you my full question, full attention. I mean, I can't make that work. All right, go on. What's the, what's the question? Yeah, last, last week I asked you about um, I had a figure of money coming in mm. and then uh, the invoice was paid off against that amount of money, yeah, which left me with a balance. But how, how do you, each time that happens, like every week, how, how does the end column, how do you reduce so that it takes the amount off that end balance? Because I couldn't work that one out. Okay, let's do that again. Yeah. Describe your spreadsheet to me. So. Yeah, so I've got, I don't know, so sort of any amount of money, £500 coming in, but in that column, in the first column, and then the invoice comes in for 100 are you, have you got multiple invoices as well? Going in, in yeah, well, I've got like um, an amount of money that's coming in and then an invoice is raised and the invoice amount, say it's £100, comes off that 500 which leaves a balance of the 400 which is fine. But then each, each week when that happens, that £400 that's left, I need previous column to come off that £400. It's totally confusing, isn't it? <laughs> I'll totally confuse you now. I know what you mean, because previously what we had was a balance. 
Yeah, that was it. Then we had yeah. uh, equals, um, that's coming in. Uh, yeah. I've done that wrong way. Equals um, that. Yeah. This, that's coming in. And then we just had lots of money coming in. And then the balance gradually decreasing down the page. But you've got money going out as well. And so in that case, then, um, we just need to make an adjustment. So it would be that minus that. Um, yeah. That. So, when, I, when I pulled that column down, it only actually it didn't take off the previous balance. It just took off the amount of money that I put in on the second line. Because you know yours is reducing there. Yeah. Mine wasn't have, reducing. Um, missed the one above. Let me try this a second because okay, this should be yeah. really easy. I just make sure I'm absolutely completely wrong. Um, yeah. Because I didn't have that initial balance, I, I, I've set it up. Sort of the money comes in over there on yeah. the five hundred pounds, and then it, the invoice goes against that, and it just keeps reducing. What you need is you need your opening balance there. I don't need an oblique because that looks horrible. Oops, not a dot, an oblique. Opening balance. Put the opening balance yeah. in here, and that'll yeah. just be plain old text. Right. Then. Um, I'll put payments here to make it look user friendly. Um, payment invoice. So all the payments go down this page, down this side. Yeah. Um, all the invoices go down this side, and the really straightforward calculation is that equals yeah. the figure above minus the payment plus the invoice. So equals figure above minus the payment equals invoice. And that should just reduce that balance each time. Yeah. And so if I drag that all the way to the bottom, I'll start with that one, I drag that down to there. And then we get some payments, and more payments, and invoices, and another payment, another invoice, um, and then a great big payment. That much. Yeah, it'll work like so. Right. But, uh, an accounts package. <laughs> <laughs> highly sophisticated. Oh, God, I was doing something wrong. Right, okay. It's only it's a straightforward calculation, you just need to tinker. Yeah, yeah. It should make yeah. sense. Yeah, or okay. Take a photo of that while it's on the screen. Yeah, okay. Pause for this bit. On the phone, something. Who doesn't have their phone It'd be right to hand? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Man, do you where's my phone got? Oh, man. <laughs> Mm. That is cool. Right. right. Meanwhile. Got it. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Got it? Yep, lovely. Thanks. Good. You're welcome.